Okay, good afternoon. Welcome, hello. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, welcome to the Lions Invitational pregame show. Uh, this is a double feature show because I was unable to get some of the technology to work last week and I had no voice, uh, so there was no way to make the audio work. Um, and because of the high dollar equipment, we didn't want to have uh, a very low quality show, so we canceled it for last week. So this week, we're going to basically go through two weeks worth of information. Uh, I'm going to try to do it as quick as possible, maybe as fast as a Jalen Scott Jones uh, spare ball. Um, we'll see how that goes. But the show is brought to you on the RTR Bowling YouTube channel by Ripping the Rack and our lovely sponsors. Uh, we'll get to those next. Okay, our show sponsors for this evening are none other than Beavers Woodpile Pub. Two for one drafts as long as you show an out of state ID. Uh, the Leading Pin Cafe and Rudolph Sled and Sleigh Tours. Um, sign up today, get two packages, and it includes your drink specials. So Rudolph Sled and Sleigh Tours. I hear that eggnog is pretty good, so check those out. Uh, tonight's uh, product showcase is the 3G uh, shoes. Um, I have the Tour Ultras. I've had these for a little over a year. Um, no problems, absolutely wonderful. Um, very happy with my results. Uh, the shoe, I, I've never really been a big uh, changer of soles. I have gotten a lot of use out of these uh, with some, some challenging approach conditions here uh, locally this year with uh, some of the Bolero issues. Um, these have uh, fit the bill every time. Uh, this is the Tour Ultra in black. They do have the Tour Ultra uh, in the Belmonte uh, signature line. I'm gonna try to uh, link the picture uh, for, the, for that in the video. Um, they do have a full set of heels if you buy the Ultra. Um, if you buy um, the smaller, the, the, the cheaper shoe, it doesn't come with everything, but these shoes, the Tour Ultras, come with everything. All the sills, all the heels. And as you can see, they're pretty uh, well made. Certainly a high quality product. Um, I like the fact that they give you lots of options. They do even have the, the little discs that you can change and customize a whole sole if you like. Um, the replacement soles are cut to fit, which is kind of annoying, um, but I actually tried it and I, I had no problems. So if I can handle that, I think you guys can probably handle that as well. And of course you get uh, all the extras. You get the shoe horns, um, you get the little shoe um, trees to keep the shape of the shoe as well as uh, a nice shoe cover. All right, so uh, check out the 3G Tour Ultras um, or any 3G shoes um, from your local pro shop. Uh, or even at stormbowling.com. Okay, so your product showcase the 3G Tour Ultra shoe. All right. Okay, now in last week's feature match, uh, Purple Hearts uh, won their feature match, and then this week they were in the feature match again. Unfortunately, they were pierced uh, by Stay Tuned at Dave Rogers and Company, um, and Purple Hearts went down three to one in a very tough match. Uh, 3183 to 3130, uh, but I think uh, 500 from two feature matches in a row has got to uh, be pretty good uh, representation of Purple Hearts. So they they bowled pretty well, uh, but this week they go down 3183 to 3130, three to one to Stay Tuned, who is still right up there, um, closing in on the on the leaders. So uh, a big match. Now Mike Borey and Matt Pritchard had big nights. They went 735, 747 respectively in that match. And that was really the difference for uh, them winning the match. Uh, Dave Rogers uh, not in the lineup this week. Uh, Bill LaPointe was the high point and the uh, the highlight of the week for the Purple Hearts. He did go 677, but that was not enough. Um, it didn't get enough support either. Um, so they, they put out 3-1. to one. But again, right there, still in the standings, I believe they're fourth at this point. So the Purple Hearts still a factor, still right there. They've had a very good year, or a very good half so far. Um, and they are going to be a factor here in the last two weeks of the half. All right, stars of the week. First for week 15, uh, we had a, a run of three weeks in a row with an 800 series. That stopped at week 15. Billy Tessier, 299 and 797 was your uh, star of the week. Uh, also, Victor Gomez went 764. Chris Baker had a 299, and Scott Borgette went 748. Kind of a lower scoring week after a number of weeks in a row where we had some big scores. Uh, and then this week, the scores also were not quite as high as they had been for the three weeks in a row. Uh, Ricky LaRoche was the high this week, 794. Uh, good week for him. I know he didn't have the, the best start to the year. He was kind of frustrated. Uh, but it looks like he's getting um, 
getting rolling. So 794 for Billy uh, Bricky LaRoche, that is your high for the set this week in week 16. Nathan Abdow, who also has not had uh, the half, I think he would have liked to have had. He went 784, 781 this week. That was second in the league. And John Van Hees, 773. And Billy Tessier, 771. So he goes 800 two weeks in a row. Then he shoots 797. Then he shoots 771 as his down week. So Billy Tessier, fourth in the league, 771. Also, we had Ryan Nelson, 299, 770 this week. Good bowling by him. And Alejandro De La Cruz, I know he had a big week. He was next to us. He was excited. Uh, it was kind of fun to watch him bowl. He, he did very well. 766, I don't know. I don't think that's a career, career high or anything, but certainly a season high. Uh, good for him. Uh, great bowling. Now, after 16 weeks, your average race has really gotten close. Tessier has really moved back up. He was up there early, remember, and then had a couple of uh, sub-600 weeks and fell way back. Um, looked like he was going to go away, but no, he came right back. Uh, he is now 241.63, but that's still slightly behind, almost a pin behind. John Van Hees, who was 242.48, and obviously Van Hees had 773 this week, so he is certainly not backing up in any way. Uh, in third, my pick for a dark horse for uh, average winner this year, Tim Healy, another good week, 237.80 for Tim, um, the lone lefty in that group, or yeah, the lone lefty in that group, and. Uh, he is going to make a run, it looks like, maybe at the high average, guys. We'll see how that goes. But uh, he is a full four pins behind uh, and almost five pins behind the leader. So we'll see how the average race goes. Uh, there's no award for the winner at the first half marker, but uh, it'll be interesting to see whether John Van Hees holds on to the first half lead or if Bill Tessier can catch him. We'll see. All right, the standings after week 16. Your leaders, again, another week Fill in the frames, Marty Jones and company, uh, even without his son Jalen. Uh, they are 44 and 20. They went 3 and 1 this week, and they stay atop the standings by a game and a half ahead of We Them Boys, who has a big, big match this week. Uh, we Them Boys are 42 and a half and 21 and a half, and obviously they went 4 and 0 this week. So they did close the gap by a game. Um, that's Stephen Chartier and company, the, the Langs kids. Um, Chico's Bail Bonds, 41-23. They went 4-0 this week. Race No had just kind of an average week, but they went 4-0. And they are right there in third, tied with the Purple Hearts, who, as we mentioned, went down 1-3. But they are tied uh, with the Chico's, 41-23 for them as well. That's fourth place, or tied for third. Uh, and in fifth, uh, the, the up-and-coming team, of the Alejandro De La Cruz's team there, Accu Electric LLC. They went 3-1 this week again. They beat us 4-0 last week, 3-1 uh, this week, so 7-1 their last two weeks. They are 39 and a half and 24 and a half, so they're only four and a half games out. It's going to be a very tight last two weeks, and obviously the teams that win the next two weeks, they will be the teams that will go up, and uh, one of them will probably win the league, I'm sure. They won't go beyond that fifth place team. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but it uh, should be a very interesting finish, especially when we tell you about the feature match. Uh, this week, which is going to be a good one. Okay, we had to take a break to go get uh, some root beer or uh, some iced tea, some brisk iced tea here at the Nelson Center. Um, so hopefully my voice will hold out to get through the show. I said as fast as a Jalen Scott Jones spare ball, but we are uh, sorely behind that, that pace. All right, on to our handicap singles leagues. Your leader in the handicap singles is Ryan Nelson. 76 and 28. He bowled 833 this week, and that was good for a 6 and 2 match win. In second place, Dennis Levely Jr., 74 and 30. Bowled 674 in this handicap this week. Somehow that was good for 8 and 0. I'm not sure how, but uh, that match gets him up there in the standings uh, into second place. And your former leader, Stephen Chartier, is now 72 and 32 after going 669 with handicap, and that was good for. 0 oh and 8, I guess that's like um, the Golden Sopero plus a few. Um, I'm not sure what 0 oh and 8, I know the Golden Sopero is 0 oh and 5, right? But uh, Chardier is 0 oh and 8 this week, so I'm not sure what that would Give him a Golden Sopero and a half, okay? Uh, in tied for 4th and 5th, David Lewis Jr., 71 and 33, bowled 726 and won 7 this week. And tied with him is Dylan Preventure, who bowled 758 and won eight points, so moved up a little bit, and now he is in the top five, uh, and that is your top five standings in the Handicap Singles League. Um, in 
Sixth place is Mike Schrems at 771 this week, bold six and two. Uh, in 35th place right now, 56 and 48. That is your final cash spot, 56 and 48. Will get you a cash spot, just eight games above 500. So those of us who are down in the stands a little bit, still plenty of time with about halfway, half of the season left to go. Uh, week 34 is the final week. So this is week uh, 17 coming up. So we are right now at the halfway point. So still plenty of time to get yourselves into the hunt. All right. Uh, on to the scratch single side. Uh, Bill Tess here, obviously having a great year. Um, 771 this week, that was good for 8-0. and um, He is 80-24, and he is your leader in the scratch side. He is just two points ahead of Ray Snow, who has probably had the most consistent week, uh, most consistent year scoring-wise. Ray only bowled 668 this week, but that was good for a 4-4 four and four match. Um, and that helped him stay right there with Bill, even though uh, Bill passed him, and they're now 1-2 the other way. Um, Snow is right there, and I'm sure will probably stay there the whole year. Um, 668, uh, kind of a down week for him, but he did go 4-4, so stayed right there. Um, seven points back in third place is Tim Healy, 71-33. He bowled 7-10 this week. He did get 6-2 and two in his match, so uh, gained some ground onto the snowman, but lost some ground on the leader. Uh, 71 and 33 is nine points out of the lead, um, but that's third place for Tim Healy. And fourth place, there's a three way tie for fourth um, at 70 and 34. All three of these guys, uh, Jimmy Sebasta, 587 this week, but somehow managed to get four points out of his match. Um, that keeps him one point behind Tim Healy. Uh, Bill LaPointe, who bowled 677 this week, he actually got eight out of his 677, so that was nice. And then somehow, uh, me, the, the hack himself, uh, I bowled 696 this week and I won eight. And I, I honestly don't know who I bowled, but um, that's unfortunate for them because um, I didn't really bowl that great. I had a, a good first game, but somehow managed to get an eight and a win this week and climb back into uh, the top four um, spot there. There's actually six guys, but uh, in four spots, okay? In the scratch singles, 10th place gets you 68 and 36. That gets you a cash spot. 10th place, 68 and 36. So um, a good 32 points above 500 it takes to get paid in the scratch league. Obviously, they're only paying one in five there, but they're paying one in three in the handicap. So um, a little bit more challenging uh, task uh, in the scratch league, but uh, probably the way it should be. So those are your standings in your handicap singles and your handicap scratch league. Okay, so the most exciting part of the show, the feature match of the week. This one is an easy one. Uh, we've had this idea in our head for a while. Uh, this week, week 17, uh, Steve Shudder's We Them Boys team is playing Carl DeRosa's uh, Lobster One team. Uh, so we've, we've dubbed it the match for the keys to the building. Um, and then we thought about maybe it would be manager versus manager or something like that. Uh, but I decided instead that this is going to be the demotion match. So uh, the winner of the match uh, gets bragging rights, the keys to the building, uh, but the loser has to go work a Bolero. So Stevie Chartier, if you uh, lose the match, uh, enjoy your time at Cranston Bowl. And then I guess if Steve somehow wins and Carl's team loses, then Carl can go work at Bolero and we'll have uh, a reign of chaos here at Cranston, or here at uh, Langs. Um, and we'll have cats and dogs living together, rain upside down. Etc. Etc. So this week, uh, the match of the week is your manager versus manager demotion match. I don't even know what pair they're on, but I'm sure I will be able to get some footage and bring that to you next week. So uh, that is your feature match of the week, uh, the demotion match. <clears throat> now on to our grab bag of randomness to close out the show. We have two things this week. Uh, first, the uh, singles league, the singles tournament at the round USBC. Singles championship uh, was concluded this past weekend, and not really a big surprise. You had two winners that we kind of could have probably called before the tournament began. Uh, in the 50 and over singles, regular singles scratch, Tim Martin took home the title, and in the 60 year old uh, super senior division, Robert Toth took home the scratch title in that tournament. Um, no surprise there, two of the best uh, sing uh, singles senior bowlers. Uh, in our state. So those are the results of your Allen USBC Senior Championship Tournament. This coming weekend is the uh, uh, Rhode Island USBC 
Women's Championship, and we will have the results of that tournament in next week's random grab bag, uh, grab bag of randomness um, for you as well. And also in the grab bag of randomness, we had some results from Neva. Um, this is not really a surprise either. Um, some of these names will be very familiar, but um, the first one was kind of a bit of a surprise. Uh, Billy Trudell, who, as, as we mentioned, both the uh, East Providence PBA Eastern Regional Tournament uh, and finished very well and cashed in that event. Well, he just uh, apparently is coming out of retirement. He finished in the top four this week at the Diva Tournament. Uh, that's good for 180 points on his Bowler of the Year uh, standing. So uh, Billy will probably move himself into the top 25. Uh, if he can bowl another event or two. Uh, also finishing in the top 16, John Van Hees. I know he actually had a very good qualifying set and then uh, lost uh, in the second round, I believe it was, I think. But uh, a good tournament for him. I know he has uh, a little bit of a struggle last couple of tournaments, so uh, back on the uh, cash train for him. Also, Tim Healy, who's not had the best year of, of his career, uh, but he did cash this weekend in the Diva in the top 16 as well. Um, and some other bowlers who made the cut this week. Mark Carruthers, who's had a very good year. I think he's been pretty happy with his, his season so far. He cashed the top 32. Jalen Scott Jones, Joey Tranzu, Sarah Gill, and Hunter Kempton. Hunter Kempton now a round uh, bowler again. Uh, after being away from school, he is now a round bowler. And uh, he is accumulating some, uh, some bowler rankings points as well. Uh, so maybe we'll see his name in the top 25 when they come out in February as well. So that is your grab bag of randomness uh, results in the NEMA and results at our senior championship. Be on the lookout next week for our grab bag of randomness to include some results from the uh, RIUSPC senior, or RIUSPC ladies championship. Uh, and our last item for the grab bag, there are two big events coming up for Ripping the Rack. January 7th here um, at Lang's Bowlerama, we have our double sermon, our annual uh, RTR doubles and that event will uh, feature a couple of ball raffles from custom pro fit so we appreciate their help and their sponsorship of the event the event is completely sold out I do have a waiting list for both the 10 a.m. and the 12 p.m. squad so uh, in the next couple of weeks hopefully we'll have uh, uh, an update as far as what the waiting list goes and uh, maybe I'll bring you that next week as well um, but that event should be a very exciting event with uh, 40 full teams of doubles should be good um, what else? That's about it. So, uh, other than that, good luck. Enjoy your holiday season. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Storm. Thank you to 3G Shoes, uh, Roto Grip, Diner Global, TurbidBowl.com, Bowlage.com, Custom ProFit, Langs Bowlerama, The Nelson Center, and all of our show sponsors, as well as our product showcase. One, two, three, four.